right, guys, how's it going? It's Krusty Old Crow back again to give you get another one of the Tactical Perspective toy reviews on the G.I. Joe Classified Series 6-inch action figures by Hasbro. Uh, this is the series that uh, goes back to the 1980s and gives it to you in a much more expensive price point, but with much more detail and definitely uh it sets the hook in deep for those of you that ever touched a gi joe in your life you probably remember it and it makes you want to touch them again uh and this time collect as many as you can in your new income bracket so uh i am crusty old crow most known to me as ryan uh i usually like to start these things off with a bit of blah 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 so blah 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 in the background, we got uh, another Canadian artist that I was just checking out today. It's, uh, it's One Bad Son, and they're doing a cover of Psycho Killer. But uh, I don't actually own any licensing to do anything, so usually I have to turn the music off at some point before I start uh, waiting for a weird message to show up in my email. Uh, guys, today um, I'm going to be trying to set out to do at least one, maybe two videos today. But the first one is... Uh, I won't call it an unboxing. I actually bought it about an hour ago. Uh, it was a figure I've been itching to buy, but it was one that I didn't let myself watch any other toy reviews on more than anything um, because I kind of knew what the conundrums were with the figure. And uh, so today I kind of wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about number 62 in the series, David Bazooka. How do you say that? Katzenbogden, I think. Katzenbogden? Not sure if it's German or Slavic, but, uh, you know, he looks like a Brooklyn brawler, and he, he, he's got that big, long last name, which I think is just kind of playing a little bit of fun with the, the German last name a little bit, because it really sounds like a, a, uh, a, a German way of saying kaboom, right? Katzenbogden. Uh, see, I didn't put my glasses on for that. As I said, he is number 62 in the series, uh, so he fits in nicely right uh, right before you get yourself an Outback or a uh, Falcon. Is it a Falcon? Yeah, Falcon. Came this one, all right? And uh, a little bit of look at the box art here. So again, another comic style, very dark looking art. Uh, this guy's art, I don't think it's the name of the artist, but he reminds me a little bit of Sam Keith, who was a... Uh, Kind of bigger in the 90s, I guess, when he did the Max and a few other things with Image. It just reminds me of one of those guys, if not a Humber Romanos, uh, Humberto Romanos, who did a lot of X-Men uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, it could also be a guy inspired by that. But here you've got Bazooka, and he's in his traditional number 14 NFL-style colored uh, jersey with the fatigues. It's a real simple, simple... Uh, uh, uniform, if you want to call it a uniform, uh, uniform cities mix, uh, but it really works well with the figure and it translated well into the action figure and you'll see that as we go on in this. Uh, and then you've got your little uh, rendering of what he's coming with and the fact that the uh, the rockets apparently uh, should be visible at the tip. It's, you know, I think they're just simulating that firing. We, uh, those of us who know, know that's not how they look when you're, you're carrying them around a the battlefield. All right, uh, and that's kind of what I bring to the table, guys, is just my military experience as a combat armed soldier. Uh, yeah, I was more armored and armored reconnaissance, but I've worked with a lot of frontline units from a lot of different countries. Seen a lot of stuff, and uh, yeah, every now and then I'll point out something I think is interesting that they've incorporated into the figure, the design, talk a little bit about that, which lends to me giving a tactical grade and a play grade to the figure at the end, just for uh, poops and giggles, guys. I try to keep my language clean up because I spent years of just having uh, the, the atypical military potty mouth and now I kind of just challenge myself to get in front of it where I can. It's not always going to work, gents and ladies. Uh, okay, so last image I wanted to talk about this one was the one that always made me snicker. I'm like, he's a, a, a six foot three, six foot four dude. He's a big brawler dude and he's got his... Um, for lack of, his bazooka, right? Which I'm not sure if it's 60 millimeter or if it's an 84 millimeter, but in my video, I'm gonna be drawing a lot of comparison to the 84 millimeter, which I have experience with. And he's uh, he, he seems to be leaping down at something or falling down at something while firing it, or, or did the bazooka send him flying through the air? 
I guess it's really about how you pose your figures and what you what you want it to say about it, but I always thought that was kind of funny. On the side, you have the primary combat functions, also known as PCFs, uh, where I come from. And uh, if you were to go onto the Hasbro website, uh, you could look up everything here and find out what it is. Number 62, as I said. And then the side art, which is really just a blow up a bit of the front art on the uh, the intimidating bazooka, David uh, Katzenbrogen. Katzenbogen. I think that's as close as I get. Somebody's gonna sort me out one day and be like, that's how you say Katzenbogen. And I'm gonna feel foolish, but for now, guys, if I offend anyone with my imitations or impersonations or, or accent reflections, it's not intended to be offensive, but you know, uh, maybe get over it or I'll stop doing it. We'll work together on that. Okay, on the back, you do get a blow up of what is uh, involved in the figure. That's where I got the statistic that he is a six foot four, six foot three point or point three nine foot man, which is significantly taller than I as a human being. Uh, you can see that he's got that t-shirt on there. Uh, and then the number 14, there is a variant on this where it's the Tiger Force version. And this is one of the conscionable choices I said we all had to know to make. And I wasn't going to watch videos that say who preferred what. They give you um, they give you the Tiger Force version of this. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, it's the uh, green and yellow cat pat pants, I believe, or something to that effect. Uh, but this time a white t-shirt. And... Uh, you know, still the other things. I'm not sure if the rockets have the detail that we're going to see with the rockets in the uh, the the standard traditional bazooka that I managed to pick up today. But um, it's it's not my preferred uh, version of this character. I prefer the traditional one. I could see why someone for uniformity purposes would have a harder time making that call if they have started down the Tiger Force rabbit holes for variants. But I'm not doing that. If I've got a character and then they get released in another variant, it's it's like being the kid again. I'm very seldom going to go back and buy that character again unless it's a troop building figure that, you know, there's no consequence to multiples. I'm not leaving them off to the side so it doesn't confuse people, myself or anyone anyway, looking at the collection. All right, guys. Uh, so that goes over the box. When you open up the box, it is packaged uh, in the new plastic free. Uh, that is, that seems to be the way they're going. I'm fine with either option. Consistency does not seem to be something that they're applying to the packaging uh, per se. And it is what it is. Uh, I've never been a box uh, in the box collector. I've always been a collector. And if the box was worth keeping, I'd keep it. Uh, prime examples of that while I was a tabletop gamer. I didn't keep my Warhammer 40k boxes once they were empty. I used them to spray paint stuff into. But when I was a Star Wars Legion player, for some reason I felt the need to keep the box because the art was good. Uh, in this case, I do feel the need to keep the box because the art is good. So they do have that standard uh, figure email. You can see I've taken mine off. This is just the standard Joe logo on this one. Uh, some of the newer ones, uh, I'll use Roadblock Torpedo as examples have a uh, artist rendition of them. Sometimes it might be different than what's on the box art and sometimes it might be the same, but it's it's nice to see the figure package on something personalized to that character. And I do hope that they continue to do stuff like that. If they're going to continue to have these comic style images and portraits and whatnot splashed across the, the packaging without the traditional file cards and mail away UPCs, and I've talked about that in previous videos. Uh, if they're not going to do throwback packaging, then absolutely do showcase packaging. It makes perfect sense, and it gives a lot of the artists uh, some extra circulation of their work. So you do get your, your ammo crate. It is marked with the number 62, and it does say David L. Bazooka Katzenbolden. Okay, so guys, uh, in one of my earlier, more recent videos, uh, I'm not sure if it was the gung-ho video or one of the others. I did start talking about uh, names on the characters. There's certain characters like Falcone, uh, Vincent Falcone. You know what their first and last name is, but they also have the character's alias on there. They've done it again here. David L. Bazooka Katzenbogen. Uh, Craig Rock and Roll McConnell. That all works. Ed... Ed Torpedo Leoloa, and so on and so forth. But then there's certain characters where 
the names like Flint and whatnot. Flint's packaging is one example where the last name and the first name are known, but they don't incorporate it in there. That's the kind of consistency I, that just picks up me. It's such a nitpicky little point, but it goes with the idea that, hey, if their side art is going to be consistent and their box size is going to be consistent and their front packaging is not going to be consistent, then don't expect it about the aliases and the, uh, the, naming, the naming convention for the boxes. But at the same time, I, I would have liked to see the whole names or just the code names, but not a mix of both throughout is what it is. So critical. What a, what a jerk. Anyways, uh, getting out of jerk mode for a little bit. Uh, the way I run these things is I do a uh, military style head to toe inspection. I look at the character from the top to the bottom and I go up one side and down the other and I talk about whether or not he's turned out properly for what he represents in his role. Uh, you know, what, what details and functionality is there that I thought was noteworthy by maybe the standard other characters. If you guys do see a massive fly on there, is uh, you know I don't edit these. Um, I am under attack. It is what it is in this garage. The, f the flies are massive and uh, I I'll, I'll get through it, but uh, I apologize. These are one takes and I, uh, I'm okay. I'm not under that bad of an assault from flies. Nonetheless, going on, so I talk about the details and, and whether I think something works or not on the character or whether I think it's just an entire creative liberty. And every now and then I'll penalize it for something. And today I've got something I need to penalize Bazooka for right away. This is another thing where I'm kind of, maybe I wish I had have watched another reviewer to see if they addressed it, but it's so in your face, I, I feel like they've had to have addressed it. And so I might be a bit repetitive if you've watched other reviewers like Kyle Peterson's Saturday Morning Toy, toy Collector, uh, Analog Toys. If we've repeated this point, then I apologize for doing it again here, but it is a sore point for me. So I'm gonna flip this over to the figure. We're gonna have a look at that. And commence the discussion. So. I'll get him off his little rotating thing because this thing hasn't been functioning very well. And I will present to you a perfectly reasonable stanced bazooka, David Katzenbogen. Bogdan. Bogdan. So you, uh, with this figure you get from the head, you get the perfect little military style helmet, a little bit older style in that it doesn't have the... Um, the Special Forces uh, bike helmet design. It's a traditional infantiers. Uh, you would have seen this kind of design during Operation Desert Storm and whatnot. It's just green as opposed to the desert tan that maybe you're more used to seeing. And I think I had an example of the helmet. So by comparison, this is off of a McFarland Toys fin uh, figure. You can see that it's really just the mesh without the fancy MVG and goggles puff put on, but still the band. Uh, these bands, guys, if you don't know what these bands serve, uh, besides helping it keep formed onto the head, if you go around to the back of the helmet, at least in our Canadian helmets, uh, at the back here, most soldiers will have it that if they were to flip the band over, like unraveling a piece of tape, flipping it over, there are a pair of reflective uh, whitish pieces of plastic on there we call cat's eyes. That is so that when you are patrolling at night on a very poor light and you're doing covertly so, uh, you don't have to switch on your lights to see each other. Those cat's eyes, when flipped over, will catch off the ambient, uh, ambient light of the, of the night sky. And you're more likely to pick those up on a subtle uh, visual spectrum and therefore be able to spread out from your, your fire team or your patrol a little bit more. Give yourself some spacing without necessarily losing where they went to, right? You should always know the route anyways, but that's a little UFI that I don't know if anyone's pointed out what these headbands bring to the table sometimes. Uh, so overall, I was very happy with that helmet. You do have the chin strap again. I, uh, I gave praise to this when I saw it with uh, Rock and Roll's helmet as well. The chin strap is usually the first thing, first detail that can be pushed aside because it's inconvenient or just sculpt it onto the character. And uh, I really love the fact that these guys, whatever molds they're using for the plastic and whatever comp, like uh, breakdown of the plastic densities they're using, it's given them the perfect, uh, the perfect ability to do weird things like, like Dusty's helmet, how you can 
You can have this mesh on the back. Now, is it better than the fabric we grew up with? That's an opinion. Um, but nonetheless, it's not obstructive because it's flexible, but it's not fragile for being flexible. So I, I do like these things on that. I really enjoy the helmets. Uh, Bazooka's face, we're going to close up on it a little bit. Again, I, as I explained in many other videos, I didn't grow up with the cartoons. I'm assuming it's a very good homage to the, uh, the actual character. And the points of articulation for the neck are just fine. It's, you know, no, no flexibility and uh, range of motion issues with a G.I. Joe classified, usually until they start loading up that chest area, right? That's when you start getting into areas or uh, add-ons to the wrists. As you go down, this is where the problems start occurring for this character. So I'm just going to switch over to this beautiful backpack before we leave it behind. Usually I like to leave the accessories at the end, but this backpack's just glorious. You know, you've got your, your pose for setting. And because he's just one piece chest, you're not going to have any problems setting it, even if he's bent over or anything like that, rotating, shifting. Uh, due to that, the peg is a singular peg hole as opposed to two holes trying to line up. Pardon me, I'll get that backpack. As opposed to the two holes trying to line up, as was with the case with uh, the Cobra Vipers and Gung Ho and several other uh, characters that we've I've talked about in the past. So with this backpack, you've got that revetted metal plating to prevent uh, puncture. It keeps it all flat, and these are mounted on a rail system. So it's all one-piece metal back, right? You don't see any padding on there or anything like that. That's got to be as uncomfortable as hell, right? To where, if you think about where it's going to sit on the figure, and on a human being, as good a shape as they are in, you would have wanted some lumber support because, as you can see, the metal frame is the whole thing, right? Uh, I believe you could pull this piece off. Let me see. I'm just looking at it now. I'm actually not going to force anything, but it looks like it's a two-piece backpack in that the canvas material pouch that sits on top, I think you could pluck it off if you were having some sort of a problem. I'm not sure. And then the rockets do slide in and out of there, and I'm not removing them because I've been having a tendency of dropping very small things, but I can focus. You've got your World War II era bomber, Spitfire kind of shark's teeth, two plain ones, and then uh, your, I almost want to call it an orcish 40K kind of yellow and yellow and black, almost like safety dummy round, but I don't think any Joe would carry dummy around. Anyways, these are just your your standard uh, any any armor projectiles, but the problem is, is that there's no way this thing sits on him. He, in the mold, as much as we all love this red shirt, has no backpack straps. He has no lumbar straps. He has nothing. He has a very nifty belt that connects to nada. Uh, and yeah, you can you can use the rail on his on his uh, on his anti tank weapon to, and hang it off these posts. That's what they're there for, and it looks cool and all. But again, my stuck point is how the hell is it sticking on to his back, right? And once that mental obstacle is there for me, it's very hard for me to let it go. Um, I, I had an entire career of humping backpacks across uh, uneven ground and through forests and across the Arctic and, uh, and in the deserts. And guys, uh, I if there is an anti-grav backpack out there that has a hover mode setting, we need this identified faster. It's not fair that the Americans are withholding this. I get tensions are high right now, but the neighbors to the north would appreciate this kind of science uh, as we are... You know, we're having a hard, hard time with our soldiers trying to get them uh, to stay healthy. They're breaking all the time when we send them on missions because of these strapped backpacks that you, uh, you've you you've just exposed. Anyways, that is a massive thing for the figure. Uh, I'll move down. The forearms and the the hands and whatnot, I have no real issues. It is a, uh, they've covered the pin system, do the dual pin on the elbows as they should, they didn't hide the pins on the knees, but they did on the elbows because of the flesh tone. And it does work well with the figure. Uh, you um, you would hope that if they were gonna pick out of the two, the flesh tone pieces were the two. You can see how that 14 lines up no matter how you rotate the torso. It, it, they've done a good job picking a simple layout to the, the design where the articulation points don't obstruct an image or anything like that. The belt, I'm a big fan of that uh, old-style brown leather 
thick belt. Uh, it looks sturdy. It looks like it's got uh, the webbing style um, attachments ability. So you can add pouches and everything like that. Uh, tactical pouches. You know, the first aid kit, as I keep putting out there. Um, and then the pants, I don't really, I don't have an issue. They're tactical looking olive drab pants. He's got some knee pads or does he? I, it's hard to tell. I don't think they're knee pads. Doesn't look like knee pads. It looks like just the articulation points of the knees may, may have confused me a bit. And then the standard, um, covered boots. He's got, now his boots are a bit different. I've seen a design like this before. These remind me more of SWAT tactical than field boots. Uh, it's a, it's a, like a strap system in front to keep the plating in, in front of the laces. I'm not actually sure if I've ever seen, um, Anyone I know or work with use them, but I think I've seen them in somebody's system somewhere. I just, um, to me, traditional laces, you can't go wrong. That screams old school. Uh, and that is still what a lot of modern boots are about. You can get fancy buckles and everything, guys, but uh, the more fancy crap you have on your boots, that's the more fancy breaks you get when you're about, uh, you know, 24 miles away from friendly lines, five away from enemy lines, and your boot decides to break one of those fancy buckles and you got to limp around trying to figure out how to uh, keep the other buckle from breaking next and things like that, right? Uh, sometimes simple is better for a reason and boots are often one of those reasons. I'm not saying there aren't high-speed boots out there though. There are, and I had a couple sets that I love, but... There's a lot of deceptively cool looking boots that are actually terrible. Okay, so we'll talk about this bad boy rocket, his uh, his bazooka here. So in my career, I have used something very similar to this. Uh, in Canada, we use an 84 millimeter rocket system, uh, anti-armor system for dismounted uh, section support weapon. So we'll sometimes have these in the back of a, of a lav uh, if, uh, say, perhaps an enemy armor shows up. Uh, again, I don't know which caliber they're going with, but ours are 84 millimeter. I imagine this is probably the same, if not very close to that. The thing a lot of people don't understand about these weapons is sometimes they don't understand how they're loaded or, or where it all works, okay? So the reason I know this is a right-handed firer's weapon, as it was on the box, is simple. His sight posts are aligned to the front or to the, hit to the right side of the, or just correction. He's right handed fire. They're aligned to the left side of the weapon, which would line up with his right eye. So he's a right, he, he is a right handed fire. Okay. Um, I do like the details they've included in the, in the weapon. I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to leave it on because there's something else I have to show with it, but he's got a support hand grip. This is often in the right position. You can see the boring, you see the lines, these lines are what, uh, that's the, the rifling, the boring inside, the, the rifling inside this that causes the spin effect of the rockets, right? That's what, and it allows the, the gases and everything to free flow out, right? So uh, I really like that they work that design in there a lot. Uh, the, the carry handle is very cool looking. Uh, I have no issues with it. It looks like you definitely want to wear gloves if you're carrying that. I wouldn't want to carry a graded piece of stern metal on a heavy piece of equipment with, uh, without gloves, but very cool. Like the extra padding on the side and, uh, the, the bar, the, these points here, the, the bars. Okay. Uh, and I was looking for hopefully one more, put in around here that would be maybe off color like uh like a rubber the same color as this and i'll explain why in a moment but overall i think they've really captured this you do have another looks like a rail mount system here if i were to just move his uh support arm a bit okay on ours we have a safety uh drill we do so the sp return spring for all of the gears and everything should be right where this Move it back. Right where my yellow thing made contact with a little nub just above the finger, but below the main body, there's a little nub there. That unscrews, that's your drive rod, like your, your return rod and your everything like that. Like that's the guts of this weapon. Uh, but you also have a safety lever that you would uh, force back with or push forward with your thumb. So the turn is cock locked on talk, right? So you, you cock it, you lock it, and then you report that it's ready or what have you, right? So... The other thing I was talking about was the bands on there. 
This is a very loud weapon with a very large concussive threat and uh, can cause a lot of hearing damage if you're not in the right positioning around this weapon and can cause a lot of damage with what's called the back blast. This is not in Canada when we train with these and when we use these, uh, they're not designed to be a one person weapon. They're actually meant to be a loader and gunner situation on an ideal circumstance. Can you fight it as one person? Sure, but then you got to get it down off your arm every time you want to reload this thing, right? And it's a, it's a cumbersome weapon and it's better to keep it up once you have it up and allow somebody else to do the reloading uh, while you retain your point of aim on the target that perhaps you missed with that first round, okay? So uh, any action figure posers out there or photographers, if you're doing bazooka, uh, just remember... Joe Privilege, he, he's probably a rock star and a surgeon with this thing on his own. But ideally, he wants, he wants a spotter. He wants a loader. Okay, so the loader, when firing, and we're going to use Lady J here because she was just available and not on a stance. You want her head low, eyes to the back, support hand on the body, so she can communicate over all the other noises and everything like that. And again, Lady J, she's perfect because she's shorter. So she lines up. Well, that's Lady J, but that's Janet. If you're nasty, anybody gets the reference and you're in the right demographic here. Okay, so she's going to stand there and she is going to do all the business. So part of the business is reloading this thing. What is happening here is this is called the, uh, in Canada, on, on our Carl Gustavs, we, we have our name for it. It's the Venturi. Okay, the Vigiri breach. So you would go in here and she would report that that's clear because he fired around and everything you've done there. When it's time to put the new round in, she's going to load it in there and then she's going to close this and she's going to hammer that. She's going to smack the locks on that, which should be two little bulbs that uh, one's on that side, one's on that side. And when you push them together, uh, they, they make sure that that seal is there and it's good to go, right? And she is going to report that the back blast is clear. Okay, and she's going to tell him he's ready to fire and do all that. That's the loader's job in a two-man team like this, okay? Because that back blast, you got to remember fog of war. You could have guys running around back here trying to get ammo somewhere. Um, this, this fiction of firing one of these from a helicopter and everything being A-OK -okay, uh, is, <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to pallet sometimes. But that's basically how it works. That back blast is enough to really, really either, you know, end your life if you're close enough, but definitely cause a lot of hearing damage, burn damage, shock damage, things like that. It's not, it's not an, um, an ignorable factor at all. Uh, so that's their job is to say the back blast is clear. Once it's, he fires, right? The loader's head has to go, right to the front. It's an automated response. It's a drill because they are both looking from their each individual perspectives where that round is going, right? So that corrections can be made and ammo can be conserved by maybe getting first, second or third round hit. Like a third round hit, after that, I guess he's on down to his, his one practice round or whatever that yellow one is, okay? But the, the loader is necessary. Tactically, guys, it's not a question of if you could, it's should you. And loaders are better. Sorry, that's just my opinion. It's coming from a place. Um, when I talked about the ring bands on here uh, and how low Lady J's head was down on there, that's not because she's rubbing up on him. She got affection for the B Brooklyn baller with the German last name or nothing like that, right? She's getting her ear below the shock level of the noise of the of this this thing will cause very uh quick and violent hearing damage to your eardrum if you are lined up and if those bands uh if one of the a couple of them are out of place so especially the i believe if and guys i'm trying to remember this right if the rubber band wasn't there or something the reverberation even can cause you hearing damage and i've had my head next to one of these when they fired in my head was in the wrong position and the ringing in my ears was memorable okay so again just an opinion piece on uh on our friend david uh cats and blokin here uh, while it is a great uh, articulation figure and everything like that, uh, he's mastered the anti-gravity backpack. 
And uh, ideally, I love the details of the weapon, but I would just want people to know, you know, that's Joe privilege. You, if you want a new way to pose them, try posing them with a loader and have a blast. Oh God, that was a terrible pun and I didn't even intend it at all. I promise you that was not intentional. Anyways, guys, we'll go back over and I'll take my brand new toy. Thank you very much. We'll track down his helmet momentarily. But uh, let's go back to the chair and close this out with our grading. Oh dear. Yeah, I guess we're gonna make this an up closer. All right. Well, without checking camera angles, I just want to close this out today by saying that overall, I'm not at all disappointed with this figure. I, uh, I actually kind of thought I would buy it a lot sooner. I, I did like the overall image of it. And there was one other reason I didn't watch the reviews is because I didn't want to be talked out of it. Right. And that's what it will come down to. I have preferences. I have some experience that maybe some of these preferences are drawn from. Am I trying to talk anyone out of anything? Absolutely not. We all enjoy these for the reasons we do. Uh, we love some of the details that they're throwing into this stuff. Some of us love other details. Sometimes we're going to point out things that don't sit right in our mind, like space backpack. Okay? But that doesn't mean we hate the piece. It's a fan. It's fine. This is just criticisms, and it's really from just a, a nobody out here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, with too much time on his hands. And... Uh, I think we're all having a lot of fun, right? So I make no, I, I don't feel I have to justify it when I criticize something. And honestly, there's a couple of you that have engaged me in discussions and you have been free to tell me to go pound salt with my opinion and you have and And I've been just really happy with the amount level of respect and uh, what I've seen uh, in the discussions. I, I hope those keep going. I'm happy always when we get new subscribers. Welcome to the, uh, the the time waster some retired guy is doing i i hope you found it informative a little bit and uh let's keep having fun so overall tactical grade on this uh i don't expect them to throw in a loader so uh the the gun's realistic the backpack's cool is it missing straps absolutely that's gonna cost it i'm putting it right at a b minus minus okay it's hard to manage that much realism and then I go, well, the red t-shirt. And I'm like, okay, well, the red t-shirt isn't a bush soldier, but maybe he's a, a, a fob soldier. Maybe he was on gate guard. And, yeah. Or maybe the, fo the, the forward operating base got attacked and he had to run from his bunk. I get it. It's not a problem. It doesn't kill a character. I really like the details. So B minus minus, and that's from wanting to give it a C for anti-gravity backpacks. Uh, playability, I'm giving it my standard A. Uh, overall, I thought there's a lot of great articulation points and you'll see other guys talk about it. I have no flaws in this figure except for just the one logic flaw with it. Pointing out the need for a loader and how these things are loaded are just fun I have. So, very good figure. If you can get your hands on one, please do. If you like the Tiger Force one, same thing. It's the same figure. It's the same sculpt. It's just the repaint. And quite honestly, uh, if I win Lotto Max this week, who knows? Maybe I'll double down and get that one as well. All right, guys. Thanks very much. If you like this video, please press that like. If you really liked it, press subscribe. And uh, again, I'll be doing some more videos down the line. I'm averaging about a few, a couple of weeks. And uh, I even have some more conversion videos coming out on some stuff I'm doing. All right. Thanks very much. Have a good one.